Will financial freedom solve all of your problems? No. A <laughs> loud resounding no! Hey guys, this is Ariane and Chris, and we retired with financial freedom at the age of 27, and we create videos like this so good people like you can get to financial freedom faster as well. Now, when we started out on this journey, we were young people early 20 something year olds right we were like most of you probably we were like hey if we have enough money so we never have to work ever again all of our problems will disappear Everything just like that will be okay the world will be perfect like there'll be no longer any stress our marriage will be perfect we'll have kids and their lives will be perfect and everything will be yeah, amazing we won't have any issues with our parents anymore because there's no money problems all of that everything will be fine that's what we thought imagination so we worked so hard for probably 10 years right like we got to college did grad school i became a speech language pathologist chris was a software developer we earned you know reinvested into our skills so we made six figures each per year and then even after that we learned about real estate and invested in real estate and built businesses so we can have more money and at the age of 27 and 28 we got financial freedom we had enough we never had to work ever again. But that wasn't really the end of the story. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Things are good, right? So let, let me not say that life sucks because we're financially free. Oh, no, right? No, financial freedom is amazing and it's a goal worth achieving. It's just not a silver bullet, right? You have different problems and these are um, first world problems, right? <laughs> they're good problems to have, but they're different, right? So before when we were living like broke college students, it was really easy to make decisions because there weren't a lot of options, right? This is the only thing we can afford, right? And we lived like that for several years, even when we could afford it, we still lived like that. But the, the, the simplicity of life was actually very comforting. And I think that's why a lot of people get stuck in like the rut is because it's so easy, it's so comfortable, there's no challenge, it's, it's easy. You go to work, you spend most of your day at work and then you come home and you spend what little time you have left with your family and you do it again and yeah. again and again and again. And let me caveat that a little bit. So um, I know some of you are hearing this and you're like, it's not easy when you're broke. Yes, we understand that. We're just saying it was simpler. It definitely was not easy. No, like hard. I came, so Chris lived in America his whole life. I actually came from the Philippines where I used to make a dollar an hour. I used to save like 10 cents, I would walk 30 minutes to save 10 cents because I could only make a dollar an hour. And at that time I wasn't in working age, so I couldn't make a dollar an hour. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and my dream at that time was to make $3 an hour. Yeah, and where poverty is, you don't get to eat. Right, like there there were no stimulus checks. No, no support, checks. right? There's no like <laughs> social support in the world. Yeah, so like, like I understand what it means to, you know, like we never ate out. We couldn't afford to eat out we would eat at McDonald's on our birthdays because that was the only time you could save up enough money to eat out, right? So I understand. <laughs> I understand if you are, you know, if you feel like you don't have enough money to like buy new shoes, I know, I know right? No, not enough money to buy new clothes. You know, you see all your friends with new whatever, like I get it. So let's just make sure. Yeah, like, it's hard to make these kind of videos because yeah. it, where we're standing now seems very different than that, but you were there. Right. So back to the video <laughs> it was just simpler yes. right and then when we got to a point where okay we actually could pay for anything we needed now we thought that the marriage stress would just magically go away guess mm -hmm. what it didn't it actually made it more complicated we thought we were just stressed out about money stuff once the money things went away we realized that oh wow like there's actually a lot of different things that we were just we were kind of just using money as an excuse mm -hmm. and we didn't now that money was ab absolutely no excuse other like, things came to the surface one good example is like in the beginning right it's easy to say like hey we're gonna sacrifice this time together and just work 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 we're just mm -hmm. gonna work 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 for these years and then after that once we reach this goal we will spend a lot of time together mm -hmm. well we actually got to that point and then when we got to the goal, we just kept working. Yeah, we moved the goalpost. We kept moving the goalpost. Right. But we never talked about it. Mm -hmm. So we just we just kind of drifted. We yeah, get, yeah, yeah. The resentment comes and all that kind of stuff. Yes. I thought we were done. I thought we were done. I thought we were done. Oh, we're not done. I thought we were done. Yeah, that. And we had to talk through that, right? And that's the kind of things that 
especially now that you have more time, there's more time to talk, which is a benefit here. We actually get to work through these issues and now we're a much stronger couple because of it. But in the beginning, right when you make that transition, everything's new and fresh and it's like new damage, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of the things we started realizing was, you know, when, when you start your life, um, you put certain people on pedestals. Like some of it is your parents, right? You put your parents on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And there were, like when you don't have time to think about things, you don't really think about all the things that maybe you put them on a pedestal for that they didn't want you to. And you didn't want you to, you kind of just did it. So there's all of this like weird internal issues that you have to deal with that kind of came from your childhood, adolescence, whatever that you just start uncovering mm -hmm. and you don't need to get financial freedom to uncover it. It's it just, just it makes it easier, right? Yeah. Because you take something off the table that you thought was the cause and then now you realize that that's not. And then you, you keep working through the several layers dim where you think this is the cause now and then this is the cause now and you just yeah. keep working through it. Right? Because like most of us say that if I had enough money, I wouldn't be stressed. Well, we spent years to getting enough money. We were still stressed, mm -hmm. right? And then you have to ask yourself, I have enough money now, why am I more stressed, right? And yeah. then it, you just peel the layers of the onions and it's gonna be a different answer for Everybody, each of us, yes. right? Like for us, it was a lot of those layers, right? Mm -hmm. Like some of it kind of came from like our childhood stuff and like all the trauma and whatever, we had to like figure that out. Um, it's gonna be too long if we talk about it in this video, we'll need like a couch. <laughs> yeah, and a therapy <laughs> session, sorry if we're, uh, we're letting you into our world uh, a little bit here. Yeah, but, yeah, but all we're saying is, there's a lot of internal things that you have to go through that the financial freedom, enough money will never solve. Right. Yeah. It so, just actually gives you more time. Right. And again, like, so more money does not solve any sort of um, emotional damage that you have accumulated across life. Right. You have to work on that separately. And having money helps that. Right. You can pay for therapy. You can pay for counselors. You can pay for mentors and coaches who will help you work through all that stuff. But it's there. And the money itself will not actually solve that. It's just a, it's a tool that allows you to seek help. Right. And you don't need money to seek help, by the way. Just, it makes it easier. So you might as well work on it now while you're getting financial freedom. Because I wish we didn't wait. I wish we didn't wait till, oh, we got to this goal. And then we started doing that. Mm -hmm. I wish throughout the years we worked on it little by little. Instead of it being a big, a big hurdle because it built up over time. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, we didn't know what we didn't know, right? So it's it's the benefit of hindsight here that we're looking back and uh at the time we did not realize that we had all this here it just came into light when we took the what we thought was the problem off the table another thing that financial freedom will not solve on its own is your health situation for example um let's say now you have all the money in the world and you can afford to eat out every single night well as it turns out the food that we eat out every single night tends to be calorie dense and when you get a bunch of calories where do they go well unless you also use your financial freedom to spend more time hiking or in the gym, that weight accumulates. And financial freedom actually makes that worse because now you can afford all of those really intense meals. One of the things you gotta do is make sure you use some of that extra time that you now buy back is to take care of your health. Start taking, going to the gym more, start hiking more, do something physical that keeps you in shape so that you don't become a couch potato and deteriorate into nothing. Even if that's what you wanna do with your life, you still gotta make time for your health. And we are speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot easier to be a certain level of fitness before we could afford all the meals we could ever afford. Because we're foodies, like we love food. That was actually one of the things we kind of chose not to do early in our journey. We chose not to eat out at all the nice restaurants we wanted to. But we chose to cook at home. We actually make really good meals at home. Um, but we she makes really good meals We chose to do that for the first you know, several years of our journey so that now we can afford to pay for the, you know, up the mountain prices. Yes, the the $6 hot chocolate and the $7 espresso. Yeah. Right. Which is actually <laughs> really still affordable. Not compared to compared a to certain other place that we went recently. Yes, compared to somewhere that starts with an S. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Financial freedom doesn't solve all of your problems. Really, it just solves one problem, which is the money problem. And sometimes having more money actually gives you more complexity in, and it removes simplicity. Mm -hmm. But we are very blessed. We are very thankful. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Again, this is one of more of the 
existential videos. Because we're in a place that, right? that pulls it out of us. We, we think about of, stuff here. We do have a lot of tactical videos. So go to the other videos in our channel. We have playlists on how to like analyze deals and how to find deals and how to do multifamily properties and all that. Mm -hmm. Check out those other videos that are more tactical. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you at the next one.